what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. Everybody kept asking me, are y'all going to do a part two battle? Because y'all got way, way more songs to play. Absolutely. So, y'all can run that thing. Y'all can run that thing for a long, 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 long time. I know Babyface can go longer because he came before me with the deal and so many other records that he's done with like the whispers. And I I, I always looked up to him, man. You know, I at one point I wanted to be down with him when I when when Gene and I, you know, we departed and I ain't had I ain't know nobody. And I said, man, those guys are doing it, man. And I wish I could get down with them. Cause I ain't had nobody, you know. What what prevented you from getting down with them? I'm sure they would have accepted you had y'all set up a meeting. We didn't we didn't know each other, and I didn't know how to get to them. So yeah. who I got to was Quincy Jones. He was the only producer that I knew and gave me his number. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And when he gave me his number, when Gene and I departed, it was like when we broke up. It was like I'm gonna call Quincy. I called Quincy, he was like, hey, son, how are you? I was like, I said, <laughs> well, Quincy, you know, I'm, I'm, he said, I know everything. He, I didn't even have to tell him. Yeah. He's like, I know everything. And uh, I wanted to tell you, you, you should go and see Clarence Avon. Huh. I, I got a meeting for you. And he sent me to see Clarence Avon. I didn't have the money to go. He got me the ticket. Mm-hmm. And um, when I went out there, everything just started opening up. Benny Medina sent me um, uh, Jane Chow. I did Don't Want to Fall in Love. I had no money. What's the first had... move that, that, that Clarence made for you? Because I know Clarence is a, a deal maker. He's a get it done type of dude. Where they say get shit done, that's Clarence Avon. Well, between Clarence and, and, and Uncle Mike, you know Mike, Mike Conception. It's like right. my uncle. Right. Between those two, that was my first job, Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah, and then I didn't have a manager, so um, I had Mike, you know, manage me. Right. And here's one guy who who managed me and never took a percentage. I'm like, how do you get paid? Right. And he explained to me, he said, I, I, I do this like, you know, like a real estate broker or an insurance broker, I'll get the money on the other side. I'll make sure you're not left with, you know, a bill, or you're not left with less money than you're supposed to get. So that taught me right there, Dad, he's a real dude, you know, and that's what made me trust him, trust him with my life. And okay, so I mean, for some clarity, how is he getting the money on the other end? If he's not he, getting he, he, Okay, I'll give you an example. There was a deal that was struck when I was signed to MCA and Universal, and I had uh, Rex and Effect, Rum Shaker. I was on, uh, I had my label over there, and Mike basically uh, put that deal together, and he, he basically said to them, listen, this is what he's gonna take home, and you give me my percentage on the other side. Looking it up, right? Yeah, so that's what he did with with uh, also with Jimmy Iovine. They made a deal. Jimmy Iovine was like, "If you can get Teddy Riley, you got this," and that was a big check, right? And he and he said, "All right, you give me that, but this doesn't come out of Teddy, right?" That's the way a true manager beyond management. He just said. I'm not gonna touch any of yours. I'm gonna make it on this side. And that's what made me say, dang, I wish I had a manager like that again. And I do. And how My manager today, that's what he do. He's like, listen, this is what you're gonna take home. This is what I'm gonna get. And this is how this works. So the guys that I work with now are amazing. You know, and, and my team around me now are amazing. But back in the day, that's what, uh, that's what Uncle Mike did for me, and that's what Clarence did. Mm -hmm. You know, Clarence was that, well, you know Clarence could do that all day. Right. <laughs> Whatever Clarence say is what it is. And the same right. thing for Mike. I always call Mike, he's like the, 
the, the the young Clarence and you know he's like the guy that remind me of Clarence so when we were together we had and we're still together now today you know he's still like an uncle to me and you know he always said to everyone if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be where I'm at today I'll probably be dead and gone mm-hmm. and um I truly believe that because you know you know he got shot so many times and you know basically when we got together, it really just turned, turned his life around. You know, and he talks about it, you know, to young kids, gangbangers and all of that. And when he, when he, um, when he do, he always tell them about me, the story about me. How long did Mike manage you? Uh, shoot, it was like 10 years, I think. Right, right. We had, we had a run. That was amazing, you know. And then afterwards, we just became family. Right. You know. So it wasn't any like ill feeling when you just what was you, oh no he never. To call back or you fell back no actually he fell back because he wanted to go into like two Mike owns I'd say over twenty five units and buildings right. <laughs> I mean from yeah. here to Dublin Dominican Republic you know he's doing very 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 well extremely well okay so. He wanted to fall back to go into that because it became really his life. Like, he, he don't have to do nothing for the rest of his life. What the haters talking about?